if the Bayonne Bridge is not raised, there are no post-Panamax ships that come to the East Coast. In other words, we shouldn't be talking about Norfolk stealing from New York or New York stealing from uh, uh, Miami. What we should be talking is about the benefits if all the East Coast ports improve their facilities. That's where the synergies are against the West Coast. And what we really want to do is bring the goods that could go either to West or East to the East. That's our, that's the synergies that's economy. The main that's, the main, that's the main that's issue. Right. The need to raise the bridge is to permit the larger post Panamax ships, which will exceed 180 feet in height. It's to raise the height of the bridge so that we can get the larger ships, the more efficient ships through. But in addition, and this, this, uh, this point gets lost, the Bayonne Bridge was opened in 1931. Uh, the George Washington Bridge opened the same year. We're replacing the cables on the George. It's about a billion dollar project, all the cables. The Br Bayonne Bridge, if, if there were no shipping issue, eventually, we would have to replace the roadway deck. We'd have to replace the cables. You don't have a 100-year-old bridge and not do major infrastructure. When we get done with the Bayonne Bridge from a vehicular point of view, we will have a brand new bridge for the next 100 years. We will have 12-foot lanes where we have 10. We'll have a median divider. We'll have shoulders for incidents. We will have a, a new walkway, bikeway that's 12-foot wide instead of... So in other words, you are getting a new bridge for vehicular creasing as well as addressing the channel issue. It's not just all about the shipping. As a commuter facility, this will be a better facility that will last for the 100 years. And if there was no navigational channel, we'd have to do that work eventually. My statement is when the Panama Canal is ready, we will be ready.